Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and I'm back with another video on friction. Now again today we'll have one more problem on wedge analysis to, to really bolster our concepts. And here we go. If you take a look at these two blocks, their natural tendencies, let me tell you, block will A will have a natural tendency to slightly move downwards, isn't it? And in that case, block B will slide towards the right hand side. That's pretty obvious. But nothing of that sort is going to happen. Why? Because we are going to apply a constant force P to prevent that from happening. So let me, let me read out the most important sentences of this particular problem. Find the value of horizontal force P applied to the lower block that will hold the system in equilibrium. Now guys, in this case, you need to take the natural tendency of both the blocks. A will have a natural tendency to move downwards. B will have a natural tendency to slide towards the right hand side. And we need to prevent all of this stuff from happening by applying a constant force P. Just think about this guys. Uh, this question could have been framed in a different manner also. And these and the direction of frictional forces and everything would have been different. Now, what if I had what if I had to tell you that uh, find the minimum force P which will just start this block A in the upper direction? Well, if it was to move in the upward direction, then the friction would have been in the downward direction. But right now, in this particular problem, A's natural tendency is in the downward direction. Therefore, at these two points, this over here and this over here, it will have friction forces in the upward direction. And here also, up the plane, you can see. And this is exactly what we've got to do. So first of all, let me write down all the point of contacts. Let's say this is one between block PA and the ground or the flow, you can say. This is between the two blocks, point two. And this over here, is the point of contact of block A with that of the wall. And let me just write this mu1 is uh, 0 0.25 at the flow, that is mu1. And we've also got mu2. Let me write it over here. Mu2 is going to be equal to between the blocks, it's 0 0.2. And we also have mu3. Mu3 is between block and the wall, 0 0.3 block and the wall. So these are the two coefficient of frictions at three distinct point of contacts. So let's get started by freeing these two bodies and let us try to analyze all the forces acting at the three point of contacts. Here we go. And here you can clearly see from this wall, we'll have a normal. And since this block A has a tendency to move downwards, friction from this wall will be in the upward direction. Here we go. Mu n, the value of mu 3 n 3, mu 3 is 0 0.3 that's why secondly we'll we'll have we'll have this let me tell you this is the normal n2 from this block b onto block a and since this block a tries to move downwards friction will be upwards and it's going to be something of this sort mu2 n2 mu2's values is 0 0.2 that is mu2 into 0 0.2 n2 again these two forces will change direction when we talk about this block B and the reasons quite obvious. Okay. Same stuff action and this is reaction. And the last but not the least, we have this point of contact one. Now B's natural tendency or block B's natural tendency will be towards the right hand side. Therefore, friction will be left hand side. No, but first of all, let me work out the normal force. Normal would be here. That's it. That's the normal. And if B has a tendency to move towards the right hand side, friction force will be towards the left hand side this way. Mu1 N1. Mu1 is nothing but 0 0.25. That's it. So guys, all the forces have been worked out. The only thing to be done is to apply the equations of equilibrium and get the final value of P. So in that quest, what we'll try to do is we'll first try to analyze this block P. Why? The reason being very simple. I want to frame an equation in which P is going to be a variable. Okay. And that will allow me to determine what are the unknowns, whether we need to find N2, whether we need to find N1 and all of that kind of stuff. So we are going to initially begin with summation of all the forces acting along X direction is equal to zero. Now what we need to do is we need to, we need to, I mean, resolve or decompose all these forces which are inclined Okay, inclined to the horizontal or to the vertical into their respective x and y components. And it's going to be, it's going to be very simple. Here we go. Something like this. 
and this is 60 degrees these two lines are parallel this is a transversal if this is 60 this angle guys has also got to be 60 degrees okay what's next if this is 60 this and this 90 degrees so the remaining stuff is 30 so you really don't need to write that but this angle this angle will also work out as 60 degree why the reason being very simple this is 60 then this angle over here is 30 and the angle between this fellow and this fellow is 90 so when you reduce um, 30 from this overall 90 you will have 60 degrees over here pretty obvious okay so here what we need to do is we need to decompose 0 0.2 into into its respective x and y components and it's going to be very simple you will have one over here let me rather the mark this if this is 0 0.2 into and this is 60 degree with this line we'll have the cos component 0 0.2 into cos 60 here we go what's next and let me have a longer vertical line it's going to have one more component right here 0 0.2 and 2 sine 60 done so we've got two components 0 0.2 into 0 0.2 into cos 60 and 0 0.2 into sine 60 we'll have uh, two components again of this n2 also so it would be better if i can mark it here so n2 one component of n2 will be right here okay so this is n2 and this is 60 degrees so here this this component is n2 cos 60 and one component we'll have here this is going to be n2 sine 60 so we have pretty much worked out all the forces and let us start with this equation of equilibrium summation of all the forces in x direction is equal to zero let's start with this p over here p it's towards the left hand side we have a minus sign um 0 0.2 n2 cos 60 this is also negative n2 sine 60 since this is towards the right hand side it has to be taken in the positive sense so and this 0 0.25 n1 this is also towards the left let me write all of this now let me write this equation in a better manner what we can do is we can take negative p over to the other side and it will obviously become positive so p is equal to let me write down the remaining stuff and that's it and once you punch this into a calculator you're going to get the value and p finally works out as let me see is the minus 0 0.25 n1 and let me see how much that value is this is going to work out as negative of 0 0.766 so negative negative becomes positive 0 0.766 times of times of n2 and let's let's call this as our equation number one and this is our master equation and which clearly indicates to find the value of p you need to find the value of n1 and you also need to find the value of n2 then only computing or determining p is possible okay in the same manner let's go ahead and let's apply the second equation of equilibrium summation of all the forces along y direction is equal to zero here we go so these two forces 0.2 n2 sine 60 and n2 cos 60 downwards negative this force n1 upwards positive and this force 1000 newtons again downwards so negative so let me start with this positive one plus n1 and these two can be written in the collective sense both of them their directions are in the downward sense so let me put a negative sign and from these two n2 can essentially be taken as common so what i can write is watch this carefully cos 60 plus 0 0.2 sin 60 and n2 already has been taken common okay and all of this is going to be equal to zero now it's it's become very easy let me again try to frame this we are going to take this 1000 outside rather to over to the other side towards the right hand side it will become positive n1 minus this stuff has to be punched into a calculator how much will that work out let me check um we'll have that value let me go ahead and check this that value will be 0 0.673 so n1 
माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन थ्री टाइम्स ऑफ एन टू इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू वन थाउजेंड न्यूटन एंड लेट मी कॉल दिस एज आर इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो नाउ दैट द फोर्स एनालिसिस फॉर ब्लॉक पी हैज बिन डन लेट्स डू द सेम फॉर ब्लॉक ए क्या वी गो एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी रिजोल्व ऑल दी फोर्सेस इन टू द रेस्पेक्टिव एक्शन वाई कॉम्पोनेंट्स फाइन सो इफ यू वॉच केयरफुली इफ आई कैन स्लाइटली extend this and if i can make a horizontal over here the angle that this makes is 60 degrees so obviously here also the angle is going to be 60 okay but don't worry normal vertical same angle if this is theta then the angle between the normal and vertical is also theta so this is 60 this is 60 if this is 60 then this stuff over here is 30 degrees and if this is 30 this is 60 if this is 60 then this stuff over here This is thirty degrees. Now let's let's quickly get the forces done. Now N two will have a component over here. Okay, I can can't put it over here because because there is no space. So let me rather have a force over here. This is the direction of N two cos thirty. Okay. Now N two's vertical component will be along this direction. Let me mark it here. N two sine thirty. So that's also done. Now we need to work out the the frictional. Force and its component. So you can clearly see this 0.2 n2 makes an angle of 30 degree with this vertical. So it's again going to have two components. One upwards. This is going to be 0.2 n2 cos 30. Okay. So these uh, blue ink I have used for all the forces acting on block A, right? And the second thing is this is 0.2 n2. This is 0.2 n2 cos 30, and this over here. Is zero point two n two sine thirty done. So let's start by working out all the forces acting along the x direction. Here we go. Summation of all the forces along x is equal to zero. Now this n three positive. This zero point two n two sine thirty. This is also positive. This n two cos thirty. Left hand side therefore negative. Three forces only along the x direction for this block A. Here we go. N three plus uh, if you if you if you watch carefully, zero point two N two sine thirty, zero point two N two sine thirty, and we have this N two cos thirty towards the left. Therefore, negative sine N two cos thirty is equal to zero. So if you try to simplify this, it will it will eventually work out as N three. Let me check if you can take N two as common. The stuff remaining inside will be 0.2 sine 30 minus cos 30, and that value will work out as. Let me check this. Um, this is going to be negative of 0.766 minus of 0.766 times of n2, and that's equal to zero. And let's call this as our equation number three. Very important. We want one more equation in terms of n3 and n2, two equations and two unknowns, n3 and n2, and we can work them out pretty easily. Now. Same manner, we'll try to do this. Summation of all the forces acting along y is equal to zero. Okay, let's start with this n two sine thirty and this zero point n two cos thirty. Both of them headed upwards, therefore positive. So what you can do is, and this n three zero point three n three. This is also upwards. So let me write this n three stuff force first zero point three n three, and from these two forces you can essentially take n two as common, and the remaining stuff is zero point two. Cos thirty plus sine thirty, and this is going to be n two. Anything else? I don't think so. All the forces have been worked out. No, 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 no. This is this is remaining five hundred. Okay, this is downwards. So minus man, I was committing a big mistake. Minus five hundred is equal to zero. Pretty much over this particular equation. And and what you need to do is you need to frame this in a better manner in a simplified way. Let me go ahead and write this: 0.3 n3. Now punch this value in a calculator. The stuff that you are going to get will be equal to positive 0.673, 0.673 times of n2, and this is going to be equal to 500. And let's call this as our equation number four. Now, guys, let me get the scientific calculator out, and we can solve these two equations in a better way. Okay, here we go. So these are essentially the two equations of which we need to solve. Let me go to mode 
for equation punch 5, punch 1 and here we go. The coefficients. <coughs> this is x and this is y. This is towards the right hand side. x and y towards the right hand side. Fine. x is n3 and y is n2. Remember this. So n3's coefficient is nothing but 1. Press enter. Uh, n2's coefficient is negative of 0 0.766. Press enter. Right hand side, 0. Press enter. Done. Second equation. Well, the coefficient of n3 is 0 0.3. Done. Coefficient of n2 is positive 0 0.673. Punch enter. Over to the right hand side, we have this 500. Punch enter. Again, punch. Value of x is 424. And the value of y is 553. Done and dusted. Let me go ahead and write this down. So the value of n3 calculated is equal to, let me see, that's 424.23. 424.23 newtons. And the value of n2, okay, on solving will work out as 553.8 precisely. 553.8 newtons now guys what you need to do is you need to put this value okay put this value of n2 over to equation number two okay and in that case what you'll have is the value of n1 let me go ahead and tell you the value of n1 will work out as let me check 1372.7 newtons 1372.7 newtons now you've got the value of n1 you've also got the value of n2 n1 and n2 are to be put up here in this equation one and then finally you can achieve the value of p and p works out as let me go ahead and write this p will work out as approximately 81.034 newtons so guys this is pretty much how you can get the value of this constant force p that is 81 newtons approximately and there is one more approach that is by using the lemmy's theorem now when you use the lemmy's approach you cannot apply it entirely for both the blocks okay because when you when you see the solution you'll realize that from block a for block a you'll see three forces passing through one single point fine you can go ahead and apply lemmy's theorem successfully to get the values of r2 and also get the value of what do you call r3 when you come over to block b and when you try to apply lemmy's theorem you won't be able to do so because you will have four forces passing through one single point you'll have reaction r1 sorry resultant r1 you have resultant r2 you have a p you have 1000 newton force also you so there are four distinct forces and in that case what you need to do is you need to again apply the the resolving of forces technique and summation of f of x and summation of f of y is equal to zero technique that's exactly how you can achieve the final answer so in the Lemmy's approach also, somewhere down the line, we are using the analytical approach. And Lemmy's theorem has been used partially and that too for only one block, that is block A. So I'm very much confident that you guys must have got a very good idea as to how this particular problem has been solved. And guys, that was all for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.